Nestled in the small town of Nacogdoches, Texas, there's a trailer park where a young boy named Clint Dempsey would fall in love with soccer and would dream of playing on the world's biggest stage. Clint Dempsey's journey would take him from these humble beginnings to soccer greatness as he would go on to play for Fulham and Tottenham in the Premier League and due to his tenacity, skill, and never quit mentality, he would become a US fan favorite and one of the greatest American soccer players of all time. What's up guys, I'm the Footballisto and in today's video, we're gonna take a deep dive into the incredible story of Clint Dempsey, who went from small town Texas to an American soccer legend. Clint's story is full of ups, like when he scored his 50th goal for Fulham in the Premier League, and downs, like when he was diagnosed with an irregular heartbeat that would keep him out of Seattle's playoff run as they went on to win their first MLS Cup in 2016. But the situation that probably had the most effect on Clint's career was the loss of his sister at just 12 years old. But Clint used the loss of his sister as motivation and inspiration to be the best player that he could possibly be. And you'll want to watch the entire video to learn how Clint received a two-year suspension from the US Open Cup. It's pretty funny. So without further ado, the Clint Dempsey story from small town Texas to an American soccer legend. Clint Drew Dempsey was born March 9th 1983 in Nacogdoches, Texas. He grew up in a trailer park. Clint is the fourth of five kids and his mother, Debbie, was a nurse and his father, Aubrey, was a carpenter. Clint was introduced to soccer by his older brother, Ryan, and they mostly played barefoot on dirt that was bumpy and uneven, but they didn't care. And with the huge Hispanic population in Texas, they would play all the time with the other kids in the neighborhood and they would try to soak up as much as they possibly could. Then in 1990, seven year old Clint went to a friend's house and he learned about just how global soccer really was. He watched the 1990 World Cup where he was introduced to the legend, Diego Maradona, and he just loved how the Argentinian played the game. So leading up to the 1994 World Cup, which was in the United States, Clint's parents on the down low were saving up enough money so they could go watch Maradona play in person as Argentina was playing in Dallas. But Maradona failed a drug test just hours before the game and Clint was so mad that Maradona couldn't play that he decided not to go to the game. But fueled by the passion that Clint got from watching the 1990 World Cup, Clint began his club career with the Texas Longhorn Soccer Club and then when his brother Ryan had a tryout for the Dallas Texans in a league youth soccer club in Dallas. Clint went along and he was just juggling on the sidelines and the Texans coaches liked what they saw from Clint and they actually recruited him to join the Dallas Texans as well. Now Nacogdoches or NAC is three hours away from Dallas so the Dempsey's would have to drive six hours round trip multiple times a week so Clint and his brother could play. Some people thought the Dempsey's were crazy but they sacrificed anything for their children. Unfortunately, Clint would have to step away from the Dallas Texans because his older sister Jennifer was an up and coming tennis star. And the Dempsey's didn't have enough money for both Clint and Jennifer. So they decided to focus on Jennifer's career because she was older. And then when she went to college, they would then again have enough money for Clint to return to the Dallas Texans. Clint was frustrated about this, but he understood and he loved his sister so he agreed. However, a couple months after leaving the Dallas Texans, Clint's sister Jennifer passed away from a brain aneurysm at just 16 years old. And Clint, he was only 12. So Clint would return to the Dallas Texans, but he had a new purpose, a new drive about him, and he would use the loss of his sister to push him to be the best player he could be while at the Dallas Texans, but it didn't stop there. He used it for motivation for his entire career as well. And then as Clint came into his teenage years in high school, Clint was always seeking out better competition, playing against older players so that he could continue to develop. So he joined a men's league that was mostly made up of Mexicans and ex-professionals. And at just 15 years old, led Zamora, 
a side made up of his high school teammates and a few family members to a league championship. In this league, Clint would show off his flair, his swag, but the older guys did not like it at all because they didn't want this 15 year old kid, you know, showing them up, making them look bad. And some of Clint's friends would advise him like, hey dude, just get the ball, pass it. You don't need to be doing the tricks and the flicks. But that wasn't in Clint's game. That's not who Clint Dempsey was. And in this league, people would even bet on games and Clint ended up getting the nickname the Gamecock because he always cashed out. So with Clint's drive to always improve and play against the best, he excelled for Nacogdoches High School. He was district MVP and all state and he was recruited and went on to play at Furman University in North Carolina. Clint played three seasons for the Paladins racking up multiple awards. He was an All-American in 2002 was all conference in 2001 and 2002. He helped firm into two regular season titles, two conference titles, and tallied 17 goals and 19 assists. And then in the 2004 MLS Super Draft, he was picked eighth overall by the New England Revolution. Now, if you guys have enjoyed the video so far, smash the like button and down in the comments, let me know what you loved most about Clint Dempsey. But let's get back into the video as Clint Dempsey begins his professional career with the Revolution. Clint played three seasons for the Revolution where he scored 26 goals and had 14 assists. And this is where he got the nickname Deuce because in college, Clint wore the number two, which is a defender's number normally. And then he carried that over to his time with New England. So that's where he gets the nickname Deuce because he wore the number two. In Clint's first season with the Revs, he had seven goals, one assist. He was rookie of the year and helped the Revolution to the Eastern Conference Finals. And then in year two, he had 11 goals and nine assists in 30 games. He scored the game-winning goal in the Eastern Conference Finals, but in the MLS Cup Final, the New England Revolution would end up losing to the LA Galaxy 1-0. And then in his third season, he had eight goals and four assists, the Revs made it all the way back to the MLS Cup. Dempsey came on as a sub in the final, but the Revs would end up losing to the Houston Dynamo 4-3 on pens. And one of the things people loved about Clint Dempsey was how he played the game. He always played hard, he was competitive, he never backed down, but sometimes it went a little bit too far. And in this third season with the Revs, it got him into trouble a couple times. Clint was suspended two weeks in March of that season because he ended up getting in a fist fight with a teammate at practice. And then he was suspended another two games for breaking an opponent's jaw, going for a ball. And throughout this video, you'll see a couple more times of where Clint takes it a bit too far. And Clint's performances over the last three seasons were impressive, so much so that Fulham ended up signing him in 2006 for a then MLS record $4 million. So at just 22 years old, Clint Dempsey joined Fulham and fellow Americans, Brian McBride, Casey Keller, and Carlos Bocanegra. That season, Dempsey joined in the January transfer window, so he was only able to make 12 appearances and only scored one goal. But Clint's lone goal came in a 1-0 win versus Liverpool, which actually saved Fulham from relegation that season. Then in Clint's second season, his first full season in London, he made 40 appearances, scored six goals, and had two assists, and was Fulham's top Premier League goal scorer of the season. But probably the most iconic moment from this season and one of the most iconic moments in Dempsey's career was you don't know where I'm from dog moment so Fulham was playing against Manchester City Clint and Man City defender Micah Richards went up for a header Clint kind of gave Richards a bit of an elbow he didn't take too kindly to it and then there was a little pushing a little shoving going back and forth getting each other's faces and then Clint said, you don't know where I'm from, dog. And while this is one of the most known Clint Dempsey moments, it's just another example of Clint Dempsey, you know, playing with confidence, playing with this swag. And it's why so many people love the way he played, but he never backed down and he always gave 100%. Then in his third season, he didn't really play much until mid-November. And then he started every single Premier League game after that. He had seven goals and two assists and 35 appearances in the Premier League and finished joint top Premier League goal scorer for Fulham that season and helped Fulham to a seventh place finish in the Prem, which up until that point was their best finish ever 
and they qualified for the new UEFA Europa League. Then in his fourth season, Clint had another solid year in the Premier League, seven goals and three assists, but that year was all about Europe. Fulham drew Roma, Basel, and CSK Sofia in the group stage. In the groups, Clint did not have any goal or assist contributions, and he didn't play in the first knockout round because of an injury, but Fulham advanced on to the round of 16 versus Juventus. And in the first leg, they lost three to one, but in the second leg, they won 4-1, advanced 5-4 on aggregate, and Clint came on as a sub in that second leg, and he scored one of the best goals of his career. A beautiful chip shot outside the box, right over the keeper, absolute perfection. In the quarterfinals, Fulham was able to get past Wolfsburg, and in the semifinals, they played against Hamburg. And this is probably one of the craziest moments of Clint's career. In the first leg, it was a 1-1 draw, nothing really to mention, but in the second leg, that's when all hell broke loose. Clint looked like he was gonna be starting that second leg, but he ended up getting dropped from the starting lineup a couple hours before the game, and he wasn't happy. He ended up punching a glass window, and there were reports that there was blood everywhere, you could see his tendon, and for the rest of the season, Clint had to wear a wrap over his hand because that's how bad of an injury it was. Again though, this is just another example of the competitor that Clint Dempsey was. Fulham did end up winning that game and advancing to the final. In the final, they faced Atletico Madrid. Clint came on as a sub in the 55th minute. However, Fulham did end up losing the game 2-1 in extra time from a goal from Diego Forlan. Then in his fifth season with Fulham, Clint had his best career so far. He finished the year with 12 goals and three assists in the Premier League, and he became the first American to score 10 goals in the Prem, and he had three braces that year versus Wiggins, Stoke, and Bolton, and he became Fulham's all-time Prem leading goal scorer, passing Brian McBride and Steve Malbron. And then in his sixth season, Clint had a breakout season in West London. He had 23 goals and eight assists in all comps, 17 goals and seven assists in the Premier League. He finished tied for fourth for the Golden Boot. He scored two hat tricks, one against Newcastle in the Premier League and one against Charlton in the FA Cup. And he became the first American to score 50 Premier League goals. And he got this in Fulham's last home game on a free kick versus Sunderland. And at the time of recording, Clint is still Fulham's top leading goal scorer in the Premier League with 50 goals. And this breakout season for Clint got him a transfer, not too far away, still in London, but a little north with Tottenham. They signed him to a three year deal for a transfer fee of around $9 million. And Clint had a solid first season with Spurs. He had 12 goals and seven assists in all comps. He had Spurs' game winner against Manchester United in September of 2012, which helped Spurs capture their first win at Old Trafford in 23 years. However, he would end up leaving for the Seattle Sounders the next season. Clint didn't expect to only play one year for Tottenham, but Seattle really wanted him and they made a lot happen so that Clint could join and he wanted to return to the MLS and still be able to make an impact for a club before he retired. So at 30 years old, Clint returned to the MLS in 2013. He signed a four year contract with Seattle for a transfer fee of around $9 million. He spent five seasons in the Pacific Northwest where he scored 57 goals and had 25 assists. His first season in Seattle was his best. He had 15 goals and seven assists in 26 MLS regular season games and led Seattle to the Western Conference Finals, but they would end up losing to the LA Galaxy. And after that first season in Seattle, Clint would actually rejoin Fulham, but not for long. He signed a two month loan in between the MLS seasons. He made seven appearances. He didn't have a goal and he didn't have an assist. In his second season, he had 10 goals and nine assists in all comps. Seattle would lose in the Western Conference semifinals versus FC Dallas 4-2 on penalties. But do you remember back at the beginning of the video when I mentioned that Clint Dempsey got a two year suspension from the US Open Cup? Well, this is it. The Seattle Sounders were playing against the rivals, the Portland Timbers, and it was a very physical game, I believe, Seattle ended the game with like seven players. It was just, it was a really physical game, lots of yellow cards. And what happened was a player from Seattle ended up getting booked and Clint 
did not like it at all. So what Clint ended up doing was knocking the ref's notebook out of his hand, which he got a yellow for, and then he proceeded to pick up the notebook, rip it up, which then got him a red card. He was then suspended for three MLS games and got fined. He was then fined from the US Open Cup and was suspended for two years. And that actually ended up being the last time that Clint Dempsey played in the US Open Cup. Again, Clint Dempsey playing on the edge, being a competitor, but he probably ended up taking it a bit too far on this one. Then in his third season, he only made 19 appearances. He did have 10 goals and one assist, but this year was all about Clint's heart. Clint was diagnosed with an irregular heartbeat that he'd been dealing with for the first half of the season and he experienced in the 2016 Copa America, but this would end up cutting Clint's season short and it was pretty disappointing for him because Seattle would go on a really nice run, make it all the way to the MLS Cup final versus Toronto and they won four to five on pens capturing their first MLS Cup. Luckily for Clint, he was able to get his irregular heartbeat dealt with and he was able to return for the next season where he really wanted to be part of a Seattle team to win the MLS Cup. And he almost did. He had 12 goals and four assists in the MLS regular season. The Seattle Sounders finished second in the West and they would make it all the way back to the MLS Cup Finals, but they would end up losing to Toronto 2-0. And in Clint's final season, he had two goals and three assists. He played his last game for the Sounders against the San Jose Earthquakes on June 26, 2018, coming in as a substitute and he ended up retiring mid season. Now, while Clint had a lot of success in the Premier League and in the MLS, he's really most known for what he was able to accomplish with the US men's national. He made his debut for the Stars and Stripes on November 17, 2004 versus Jamaica where he came in as a sub in the 67th minute. He ended up scoring his first goal for the United States against England in a friendly in 2005. His first tournament with the United States was at the 2005 Gold Cup where the US went on to beat Panama in the final 3-1 on pens. And leading up to the 2006 World Cup, Nike actually came to Clint and asked him if he wanted to be part of their Don't Tread On Me campaign. And Clint was like, sure. So Clint ended up making a rap and doing a song, which was right in Clint's wheelhouse because he loved to freestyle. He would actually do it on the bus rides home when he was in high school and all of his teammates would love it. But what's craziest about this is that Clint wasn't even a sure thing to make the squad for the 2006 World Cup. However, he did make the roster and he got a goal and assist in the group stage Sadly for the US though, they finished bottom of their group and were eliminated. Then at the 2007 Gold Cup, he started every single game and the US defended their title as they beat Mexico 2-1. Then in the 2009 Confederations Cup, he scored a goal in the last three games as the US beat Spain in the semifinals 2-0 and went on to the final but would lose to Brazil. Then came the 2010 World Cup. In the first game, the US played England. They drew 1-1, Clint got the goal and while it was a World Cup goal, it helped the US get a huge point. It was even more special for Clint. Because as Clint took a shot from outside the box, the England keeper kind of just parried it to the side and it slowly trickled into the net. And Clint accounts this to his sister, Jennifer. Because when they were kids, they talked about, you know, what would happen if one of us died and what they should do to like come back and, you know, tell the other person. And they said, maybe, you know, come back and write something on the wall but Clint, Clint was like no 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 that's that's too scary so he asked his sister to you know help him score a goal and so that's why this goal has so much meaning for Clint because he believes the reason it went in was you know from the help of his sister and then Clint played a huge part in probably one of the biggest goals in American history as his shot got blocked and then Landon Donovan scored a 91st minute goal versus Algeria that sent the US through to the knockout round. However, the US would end up losing in the round of 16 in extra time to Ghana by a score of two to one. Then at the 2011 Gold Cup, Clint started and played 90 minutes in every match, scored three goals and had one assist, made it to the finals, but lost to Mexico. Then at the 2014 World Cup, Clint was named captain. And in the first match versus Ghana, he scored the fifth fastest goal in World Cup history and in that same game he caught a high boot broke his nose but continued to play 
because that's just who Clint Dempsey was. The US would go on to advance out of the groups for a second consecutive World Cup, but would end up losing in the round of 16 in extra time to Belgium two to one. In the 2015 World Cup, Clinton had seven goals and his first hat trick for the US in a six nil win versus Haiti. But disappointingly, they would end up losing in the semifinals to Jamaica. Then at the 2016 Copa America, Clinton had three goals and three assists as the US made it to the semis, but ended up losing to Messi in Argentina. And this is when Clinton was having that irregular heartbeat and he still had a fantastic tournament. And then the last tournament with the US was the 2017 Gold Cup. He had one goal and three assists as the U.S. won it all, beating Jamaica 2-1. But the biggest thing about that tournament was his goal versus Costa Rica in the semis, but that was his 57th goal for the U.S., which tied him with Landon Donovan for most goals by a U.S. men's national team player. Clint's last game for the U.S. was on October 11, 2017, after making 141 appearances, captaining the national team 18 times, and ending joint top for most goals in U.S. men's national team history. Clint Dempsey was such a beloved figure among soccer fans in America. Beyond his impressive accomplishments with the U.S. men's national team and in the Premier League, Clint Dempsey was a fan favorite because of his relentless work ethic, passion for the game, and unwavering dedication to represent his country with the utmost pride. His impact on American soccer extends far beyond his own playing career, as he's paved the way for future generations of American players to make their mark in the Premier League and in Europe. Dempsey's story is a true testament of resilience, hard work, and perseverance in the face of adversity, and serves as an inspiration to all of us to never give up on your dream. If you've enjoyed the video, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and if you guys are in the neighborhood to pick up a kit or your favorite apparel, click the link down below. It's gonna take you to Kit Bag, which is an amazing soccer store to pick up favorite kits, apparel from teams. If you're in the US, you probably know about Fanatics. It's Fanatics specific soccer store, which I didn't even know existed, but there's some really awesome stuff there. They got a huge range of kits, apparel, everything. It will be the first link in the description, so go down there, click on that. It really helps this channel and it really helps me be able to make more of these awesome videos. So if you're in the neighborhood, click that first link in the description and pick something up. I really do appreciate you guys watching. And that is the Clint Dempsey story from small town, Texas to American soccer legend. I'm the footballisto and I will catch you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.